Well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. It's really an honor to have you all here, my esteemed artist friends, my other friends in struggle. I recognize a lot of people here. Um, a lot of the work I've done here actually involves people in this room. We're always in the same struggle together. I did a lot of photography of the, the anti-war marches and things like that. I had always wanted to have my art have some kind of a social relevance and meaning to affect people's lives and to reflect people's lives. I was going to school, I was into Asian American studies, and there was a whole movement about going into the community. The students felt that, yeah, we need to get out of the classroom and into the community. You know? And I was also looking for my American identity, too, because I knew I was staying, I was an immigrant, I wasn't going to go back to Hong Kong, China. So how am I going to be American? You know, I'm not white, I don't want to be white. When I met other activists in Chinatown, I felt a kinship with them. I felt more at home in that situation. I always had sort of a kind of spontaneous resonance with Native American art. Native American art affected me a lot, but I was very aware of not taking part in the cultural appropriation because that's happened to us, to Chinese art, a lot. So I'm, I, I, was, I had to think very clearly about what's appropriation and what's cross-fertilization, what's inspiration from other cultures. And I researched into my Chinese art and found, again, found huge similarities with native concepts and spirituality with relations to animals, the mythologies and stuff. And that's why my first series of prints was called Animals, Myth and Dreams. When I heard about what was happening in, in uh, North Dakota at Standing Rock, it seemed like the perfect intersection of these different currents that, that have been motivating me. There were Indian people from all over the country coming there. And when I asked each one of them, they always said, well, I came to pray. I couldn't help but have that kind of a stereotypical response by a, a Western rational kind of thing. They said, really? Pray? You expect prayer to change things? You know, I had a moment of that kind of disbelief. But because you could see how people practice what they say, I sort of suspended my, my own disbelief and my own, and I just said, okay, just, just go with it. Let's take follow in their leadership. You know, that was always sort of my, my approach to it. Always, if I'm gonna go to stand in solidarity with them, I need to follow their leadership in it. This is being practiced right here. You know, it may not be Buddhism, but there's so many similar concepts. And, it's, and um, yeah, I was just very inspired by how people, how Native peoples, to, you know, handle the situation. The garden, looking back on it now, I think is actually really crucial in my changeover from political activism to more spiritual seeking, while at the same time not, not rejecting the political activism, but, but I was trying to see how I could incorporate it all into a cohesive, um, a cohesive and coherent whole for myself, of how to live my life and what to do with my art. I look towards more spirituality and to sort of frame my own life and find answers to questions, you know, and, and well, how can we change to make things better? Politics was one way, but you needed more change from the inside. Curating that show myself was a trip in itself. You know, what it meant to me and what to keep in, what to throw out, what was important, what makes the thread, the bare thread of my life story. It was extraneous. Where I want to go from here is, I think one is to sort of uh, condense things down to the essentials um, and not have sort of monkey mind, you know, to grab everything I see. For me to continue doing my art in this particular context is, is important, you know, and the thing is to just keep on, never give up, just keep on at it, you know, 
We've been through all this before. We've seen people like Trump before. We outlived them, you know. And this is the feeling that I was standing around. It was really strong. People say, you know, we're forgotten about. People think we're dead and gone. We're part of history. We're still here. You hear that a lot. We're still here. And after all that, we're still here. So to me, that's that's my strength, you know. That from from all our comrades, our friends, and our people who are on the same side. But but yeah, it's not that easy. You don't. It's not that easy for you to destroy us. You know? So you know, culture is what really keeps us alive. Memory is the voice of my grandfather recounting our stories in glory to keep me from hating myself, feeling inferior to the foreigner. Memory is my father's brush, letting beauty and truth onto paper, teaching me to love myself and where I came from.